Welcome to episode 227, Inside the Mind of the Bare Knuckle Fighting Champion, Christine Faria. Welcome to the Be That 1% podcast. I'm your host, James Silvis, mindset specialist and performance coach. And here on the show, I'm going to challenge you to think deeper, commit to greatness, and develop a stronger mindset. You'll hear stories from those who are living life on their terms, and you'll receive strategies that will help you level up. So the question is, are you ready to be your own 1%? Let's get started. Hey, everybody, real quick before we jump into the episode, want to make a note on the external noise that you'll hear in this episode. Uh, Christine and I were back and forth on times that worked best before she got into her fight routine and and was traveling. And so the only way we could fit it in was when she was um, at the barbershop. And so you may hear some buzzers in the background from time to time. So just wanted to give you that preface as you listen to this amazing episode. But without further ado, let's hop right in. All right, everybody, welcome back to the Be That 1% podcast. Today, I have Christine Faria in the building. If you do not know who this is, you will now. She is the first ever 125-pound bare-knuckle world champion and first ever American Police Gazette champion, which I'm sure she'll explain in depth. But basically, she's a badass, and this is, uh, I'm really excited about this interview. One, because I think you're the first fighter at this level that we've had on the podcast, which is really cool. Um, And just a quick backstory on how we got connected for everyone listening. We train at the same gym, uh, DLX, shout out to you in Las Vegas. I was being trained by my trainer, uh, Augie, shout out to you, Augie. And during our session, he he says, hey, do you know who that is? And Mm -hmm. points at Christine, and I'm like, no. And he goes, that's, that's the bare knuckle world champion. I'm like, wait, wait, what? Are you serious? That's awesome. And I remember thinking throughout that session, like, what is that like? Uh, I didn't even know, honestly, that that was a thing, but wow, cool. And yeah. as that session went on, I was like, I would love to interview her. So I said, Augie, do you think that she would be interested in that? He's like, I don't know, but I'll ask her. And so I'm getting ready to walk out. I actually walk out of the gym and Augie yeah, grabs me yeah and calls me back and I'm like he's like go go talk to her I'm like all right yeah and so that's when we connected and I asked you to come on the show and you were kind enough to say yes and here we are so welcome yes. Christine thank you thank you and I appreciate you accommodating my um doing my hair at the same time sorry <laughs> yeah no worries so we'll start off with a few rapid fire questions for everyone to get to know you in a hurry and then we'll stem into the uh your hit back history and kind of where you are now. So first question is where were you born and raised? San Jose, California and Modesto, California. Cool. What's a philosophy that you live by? Hard work, dedication. <laughs> Simple. Love it. <laughs> what is your definition of failure? Uh, not trying. What do you want to see more of in this world? Acceptance. What's a game changing book or documentary or podcast episode that you've read, listened to, or watched recently or in the past? Tim Grover's, uh, I'm drawing the blank. You know, Tim Grover. Um, I like winning the one before that. That was, oh, uh, yeah, I know, I know, I I was gonna say winning. I've read it four billion times. Um, Okay, Tim Grover winning is also one of them. I, it, it was okay. the, the second half, so I'll just I'll go with winning for now. Okay, cool. Um, what is a solid piece of advice that you've received recently or in the past that has served you well? You know, when well for me, um, getting hit, you know, you would get mad at that person and lose control, right? But a coach, Dewey Cooper, told me it's your fault. If you get hit, it's not their fault. So that helped, that helped me with Mm. controlling my anger and losing control in the room. You know, um, Mm. if you mess up or you let somebody do something to you, that's on you. It's not on them. So Mm. that kind of made made me hold responsibility for my technique, my actions, my emotions. I like that. That was actually very key for me. That's huge. 
Um, last one. I know this is a heavy question and, and I don't expect, uh, a depth, depth of an answer, but what did you have to give up or sacrifice in order to get to where you are today? Let's see a wife, a couple girlfriends, a couple jobs, some, some college, anything else? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a lot. And probably still uh, giving up, right? Oh, a lot of sacrifice. Absolutely. absolutely. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. So let's, let's get to, uh, how you got into this. When did you, when did you start fighting? How did it even come about and, uh, take us through just kind of a brief update of, of your history. Okay. Okay. I, uh, you know, I was a little, kind of a crazy little kid and did, um, you know, I, I guess I was an adrenaline seeker and wasn't in sports. So, cause I was too, rambunctious in school so they wouldn't and I wasn't paying attention in class so I I didn't get good enough grades to play the sports that I started I was really good in them and then they would cut me because of my grades so I ended up reaching out to other things in life and then um, started getting in a lot of trouble and then eventually figured out that I didn't want that life and so I, I walked into a gym uh, just a regular gym where you go treadmills and weights and uh, there was a fight gym in there. I was always look in there, like see these these little 125 pound girls. Just I was like, oh, I have to definitely handle all of them, you know. <laughs> so I, I would mean mug them for about six months, and then I finally was like, I'm gonna get in this class. And they would mean mug me, I'd mean mug them. So when I when they finally got me in there, <laughs> I was like, all right, they're like, all right, we're, let's just spar in today. They beat the little crap out of me. I, I found out that street fighting is not really fighting. <laughs> mm. You know what I mean? And and then it hooked me from there. So like the competition and then realizing, you know, when I looked at these girls, I thought I could literally just have my way with them and they beat the crap out of me. And it mm. it gripped me to want get want to get better. And a lot of things didn't hold me like that. So mm. um I got hooked and they threw me in my first fight like in three months of training and it was Muay Thai I started off in Muay Thai and then I went undefeated in Muay Thai then went over into MMA because I, I couldn't find fights in Muay Thai I went to MMA I found some fights there and then I had a boxing fight and um I mean uh the, the MMA girl had a lot really good boxing so I was like damn she she edged it out with the boxing in in my loss and so I went into a boxing gym and then I fell in love with boxing Mm. I was like, this is where I should have been the whole time, mm. you know? And, um, she, um, I ended up staying there and then bare knuckle called me and said, do you want a bare knuckle box? And I said, no, <laughs> like, I thought it was some underground crap. <laughs> That's what I thought. Yeah. Like, I was like, no, dude, I don't do that. Cause I remember one of my coaches when I very first started talk, telling me, don't do underground fights. If you get hurt, you're not covered by insurance nothing like that so i'm like okay i'm not going to do that because if i mean if i get hurt i i'm screwed i'm paying out of pocket and um i was like no no, no i'm not interested and then i saw you know uh, one of the ufc fighters in there i was like oh this is real okay and that's when i was like yeah i'll bear knuckle box you know it's a, it's sanctioned it's it's legal let's do it wow so like that's my little story of yeah like you know what of so of your first Muay Thai fight and then yeah. your first MMA fight and then your first bare knuckle fight, which one were you most nervous for? My first Muay Thai is the first fight. It's okay. because it's so intimidating when you walk in there and there's like people all laying on the ground. Just I'm like, what is this? And I'm three months in the game, you know, and I'm like, people are in the back jump roping some people are sleeping some people are eating some people are walking back and forth pacing um and i'm just like and it was in a gym and it, it was a little tiny it was actually gina carano's first um i think she fought there for the first time as well but um it was like a little tiny ring and oh my god i freaked out it was so crazy because like i come from like street fights and stuff like that so when I got in there, I was just like, all right, let's go. So I like went in the first round and we fought and I go back to the corner and some, there's a guy, like people are surrounding the ring. He was like literally in a little gym and um, he's standing in the corner and I was like, who, who are you? Who are you? Get out of my corner. And I'm like, I look back like, oh my God, I was insane. 
but um it just I was freaked out you know just like the, the intensity and not being in that um environment and, you know it's controlled but in my mind it's not controlled this is a fight so I went in there raw super raw like three months in the game not having much coaching mentally emotionally how to deal with the whole competition and fighting somebody you know mm. and it was it was extremely uh <laughs> crazy environment wow. so my first one was actually my most uh my most nerves yeah yeah what what do you love about what you do um it's it pushes me in every single way mentally emotionally physically and i have to be disciplined i have to eat well um uh I, I have to be healthy you know i i love i love to have to be that way you know a lot of people are like how are you you're so disciplined i'm like well if someone <laughs> wants to beat the shit out of you are you gonna fuck up on your diet <laughs> are you not gonna get up and run because i don't want to get knocked out on tv in front of my friends family and tv and all the sponsors that time and money and i don't want to walk back disappointing them like that's what fuels me and keeps me disciplined Mm. But then it turned into a lifestyle. You know, when you do something for a long time over and over and over, it just becomes who you are. It's not even really a question or um, an effort anymore. You know? Mm. Mm. Wow. I love that. Yeah. What, how do you prepare mentally for a fight that is, let's say, like, let's just take your, your title fight, right? Like something mm. very prestigious. You know that you've been putting years of hard work into this, lots of sacrifice. What it, what are some mental uh, strategies or techniques that you use to to get yourself to the point where when that bell rings, you're there? So everything's and I learned from Gil Martinez, um, very good mental coach, very stern guy um, who sit us down and give us talks and talks and talks. So and, and also Dewey Cooper when you walk through the door of your gym, it's, you flip, flip the switch. It's focus. It's you're, you're you, you can have, go in there. I liked Gil Martinez cause we didn't talk during practice. We didn't, all we did was train and, and super like laser focused and work very hard. And I believe that in my training, when I walk into that gym and I'm going in there to train, I go in there, I might look like an asshole, but it's only because I'm focused. But when you walk into that ring, it's not all fun and games and talking and making friends. You're literally there to fight. And at any time, anything could happen in that fight to you or your opponent. So um, I like to walk in and be focused, get straight to work. And everything is a fight in there. The bag is not a bag. It's a person. Mm. The When I'm on pads, it's not just some guy telling me to hit something it's that's my opponent's face i'm moving um punching when i'm shadow boxing i'm picturing someone in front of me it's not just moving around throwing my arms mm -hmm. you know so I, I i find it very important even when i've run i i listen to either motivational stuff or um motivational or sometimes just just background music I, to focus and then visualize visualize my fight what i want to happen um, visualize uh, or repeating to myself over and over, like I'm healthy, I'm strong, um, just uh, stuff like that over and over throughout my whole camp. You know, I give myself a little break after, but sure. um, I think those things are key and it ha literally has to be your whole life. Yeah. It, if you want to reach the top. Right. Because you, most people can't do that. Literally live that life every single day doing that over and over. And then yeah. isolating from my friends and family um, because not everybody has the clean and disciplined lifestyle and that kind of mentality. So I like to place myself around champions. I like to place myself around high level athletes, high level thinkers. Um, uh, it's, uh, it's also, and it's your surroundings. So you place yourself around what you eat, the nutrition, the water you drink every day. Like if you don't have enough water, if you don't have the right nutrients in your body, the right vitamins, you're not stretching, you're not doing yoga, you're not keeping um, meditative meditative state, you're not going to be able to get into a deep zone. Mm -hmm. You know, so mm -hmm. there's when I'm in there, I don't hear, I don't care if people are booing me, I don't care if her team's telling me I'm going to lose or 
if people are trying to bring me down mentally, my opponent's trying to trash talk to get me sidetracked, none of that's going to affect me because I'm super focused and I know who I am and I'm very confident because of the leading work I do up to it. Yeah, that's beautiful. Did you, uh, how young were you when these types of ways of thinking started to really click? Like, was this in middle school? Was this earlier? Was this later? Like, what time frame did you really start to understand the importance of discipline and uh, execute firmly on the things that you know you needed to do? I think mid 20s, because, and I didn't know the level of commitment this stuff takes. Yeah. But at the I, when I started it, I know what I wanted and I knew I had a lot of catching up to do. So like, it was kind of immediate for me when I started competing after I got my ass whooped, you know, that it was going to take me a lot to catch up to, yeah. to people. And, um, I, uh, I'm, I'm thinking about 25 and yeah. 26, but I was still messing up a little bit around there, you know, yeah. but it, when it fully kicked in, I was probably 30, 30, 30 yeah. yeah, like about 29, 30, where it was like super solid, but it, cool. it came in mid twenties. Got it. I like that. When you, uh, what goes through your mind when you get hit unexpectedly by a kick or a punch oh. and it kind of knocks you off center, right? Like is there a thought there or is it, are you more in instinct and just your, your natural body t- is training is coming through? Like what, what is that moment? Yeah. Like? So when, yeah, uh, I just, I know well, I've had coaches tell me if you get dropped, you, you get not, uh, you know, your bell rung, deep breaths, get it back, throw your jab out there or clinch up. So that's all that comes in my mind. Mm-hmm when that happens, it's what they told me. And when I, when, when I have coaches, I listen and I'm going to do whatever they tell me. I, I'm pretty good at listening. You know, yeah. that's a big thing that I noticed a lot of high performing athletes do is they're very, very coachable. Mm-hmm. Uh, they know how to listen and they, and they take direction really well. And yeah. it's so, so important. Cause as, as you know, you can't do it alone. You need someone no. else, many people in your corner that have the right expertise that can help you see what you can't see. So right. I'm happy to hear that because that just reinforces my belief in the student-like mindset um, and continuing to learn always. You can always get better. You can always learn yes. something new. Yes. Uh, how do you feel when you knock somebody out? Thank God, this is over. <laughs> no. <laughs> so I'm like, okay, that was, uh, that was great. Like, I just, I, I know it's over, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I just know it's over. I love that it's over and I'm winning. Mm-hmm. I'm, I hope they're okay. Yeah. You know, of course, you know, I always hope they're okay. Um, but I'm just, I'm grateful to be the winner. <laughs> yeah. Before yeah. that fight starts, when you're looking across from one another or you, you shake hands or hit gloves in the middle, is there something that you're looking for in the eyes of your oh, yeah. opponent or your body? And like, so describe that for, for normal people who will probably never step in any ring, even if it's for just a training session at boxing, like, what is that like? What are you looking for? And how do you know when you've found it? Oh, well, I, I'm definitely looking at the body language and, uh, is it confident? Um, I, I, never, I mean, the, you can you can hide body language, but you can't hide the eyes. Um, I you I I can see fear. I I know I know when they're scared, mm. or I know when they're determined and they're coming hard. You know, so yeah. And how does that, how does that change? If it does, that does that change how your approach is, or does it reinforce certain things when you see that, or? Well, it, sometimes I'll, I'll, I'll know if they're going to come like crazy yeah. off the top. Yeah. So I'm going to adjust and sidestep or whatever I'm going to do, you know, but, yeah. um, it doesn't ever change my game or anything like that. It okay. just, I, I, I know sometimes, uh, I, I'm going to have to watch out for the, them being super aggressive. 
Okay. Got it. You know, if you were to break down a fight in physical versus mental and give it percentages, what percentage would you give it physical? What percentage mental? 99% mental. <laughs> yeah. I the, believe because uh, if you can't push through a run, you're not going to, if your mental tells you to stop, like, I'm tired. You're not even going to get the physical part mm-hmm. because your mind's already stopping you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> or if you get up in the morning, oh, it's too early. My body hurts. You're not even going to get up to do the physical. So I think mental is huge. Yeah. I think it's the whole game because we can, if, if you tell yourself you're strong, you're going to be strong. If you tell, tell yourself you're a victim, you're a victim. If you tell yourself um, you can't do that, you're not going to be able to do it. We're all human. We're all capable of doing anything we want if we put our mind to it, you know? And yeah. um, I mean, not all of us are, are uh, geniuses, but we're all capable of learning a certain subject if you focus on it and research it and uh, practice it. Yeah. There's a, there's times in my life I'm thinking about very challenging moments that I've purposely put myself in, whether it's, you know, doing ultra runs or Ironmans or sparring or, or whatever. Uh, and in those very extreme, painful challenge moments, I find that the voice I use most is one of a bully. Yeah. I bully myself. Is that what it's like for you too? Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> the things I say to myself, I can't even say on this. <laughs> yeah, yeah no, I bully myself sometimes. I do. I, yeah. You have to. I think it's you necessary. It's very necessary. Very. That's why I tell my girl and I tell like my um, my friends. I'm like, dude, if I'm talking to you like too crazy or this is literally how I talk to myself. So, yeah. like, yeah. It's, don't be offended by me <laughs> or think I'm disrespecting you. Like, this is just who I am. Mm-hmm. Cause this is, this is what pushes me through. Some people mm-hmm. are like, Oh, I don't learn like that. I'm like, okay, just let me know. I'll just. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. I, I just, I think people don't understand that level of tenacity and, and intensity mm-hmm. until they're right. in the thick of, I don't know if I can go any further. And it's at right. that moment where you need that level of power to come through, to get you to go mm-hmm. to a new level. And everybody has it. Right. That's the thing. We all have it. We're all, we're civilized now, you know, like we're, we're in a civilized um, universe now. And, um, but we weren't always like that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. What would you say are three, one to three, one to three main takeaways that fighting has taught you that have applied to so many aspects of life? I've dis, uh, discipline, control, um, and commitment, mm-hmm. you know, those are three main ones that are just, um, I mean, yeah. it, it going through, you know what fighting is, you know, you go in, you're cutting weight, you're taking physical damage and you have, and then it just diet, it's, it's tough, yeah. you know, and then and running and sprinting and lifting weights and constant, you know, strain on your body and mind, it, you have to learn to stick to this and endure a lot of pain and mental anguish, physical anguish, emotional anguish. Mm -hmm. But then, I mean, there's a, there's a bright side to it, of course, there's like Mm -hmm. the victories and stuff, but for the most part, it's a lot of struggle. And I think you learn most through struggle and pain. So I just love what I do. It's tough and it sucks sometimes, but I know it's teaching me so much and it's keeping me in check. Yeah. You're really controlling the meaning of that pain, which is important. Mm -hmm. Uh, For those out there listening who struggle with discipline, with commitment, with uh, toughness and resiliency, when, when those thoughts of, I don't want to do that. And they just give into that. What would be some advice that, or, or some suggestions on how they can begin to one, recognize that they're doing that, but two, push past that so that they can actually do the work that they've, they've quote unquote committed to them to doing. Well, when I used a lot, when I, um, when I first came up, when I first started coming up was remember what you started for, why you started Mm -hmm. the the reason why you started got you that motivated. Right. So I think that remembering the reason why 
you know, and uh, if it doesn't hurt, if it doesn't, if it's not painful and it's not difficult, it's not worth it. The only, only good things come out of pain and the struggle. That's why I appreciate, I always put on my uh, Facebook or Instagram, appreciate the struggle. I appreciate it when that shit's happening to me. I am like, thank you, literally, because I know that something great is going to be at the end of it. It will, but it sucks during. Of course, I don't like it. It's not fun, but I know the more I suffer in training, the more I suffer in life through certain, what whatever period, time period it is, because we all know it. nothing lasts forever. No pain lasts forever. You know, we all, it, it comes in bouts or it's like mountains we're climbing and then sometimes we're, we're chilling and it, it, you know, um, just know that it's, it's going to be over and everything comes good out of the worst. Mm-hmm. That's how I, that's how I think. I got out of that. Have you had any role models or heroes in the past that you've emulated or tried to model because of what they embodied or what they represent? Yeah, so many, <laughs> so many. I, I, there's so many great people out there. So many great stars. Um, I mean, I love Sugar Ray Leonard. I love Mayweather. I love Canelo. I love um, like Dewey Cooper, Gil Martinez. These coaches, these world class coaches. Uh, there's so many. Chris Cyborg was was a person that I saw as a really strong fighter and dedicated and looked like a beast and that's what I like wanted to be you know um Michael Jordan is Kobe Bryant you know I just greatness, I, yeah. I, I look yeah greatness and, and I studied these guys I studied the mentality and I I studied I study on everybody's mentality that has accomplished big things and I try to um I don't want to be them I want to be myself but at the same time, there are certain steps to be taken. And everybody, all the greats and everybody successful has similar steps, but in their own way, their own yeah. unique way. Yeah. You know, how, how often in your day, how much of your day is comprised of uh, research and learning, like whether that's all reading, watching all something? <laughs> yeah. All day I'm looking for something. All day. Same. I'm, constantly in my phone um if it's not if it's not um someone's behavior someone's it's something i'm picking up or if i'm lacking in or i'm like okay i'm sometimes we hit walls right where i'm like i first of all i can't maybe i can't get past 139 i'm like well what do i got to do to get under 139 in a healthy way Right. I'm not going to just go take some pills to lose some weight. It's like, how do I do this healthy? How do I, or if I'm stuck mentally, like I'm trying to figure it out. Cause we all get stuck. We all hit walls. We all plateau on, we all get bored with our jobs. And we've been in our job 10 years, 15 years. We've got to find new, new goals. Like for mm-hmm. me, okay. I'm, I'm world champion, right? I've reached the, the goal. I never thought I would reach or, it was look so far, right? Now I'm like, okay, now I want uh, I want a clean knockout. So that keeps me engaged. Mm. So I want to be the first one that to sleep somebody now. Because I TKO people, but I haven't slept her. So now mm. that's a new goal for mm. me, you know, to where I um I have to be more precise, faster, you know, and not necessarily stronger, but precision and mm. speed. You know, so I'm now I'm working on precision and speed and uh, just finding new things all the time, even if you're bored in what you're doing. It's just like a marriage, just like a relationship. You got to find things to make it right. last. Right. You know, you got to find ways to engage and keep your fans or your wife or your boyfriend or girlfriend um, engaged and happy because it's possible. It's possible to be with somebody for 50 years and not be bored out of your mind. You just got to work for it. Mm-hmm. You know? That's great. That's great. How do you recover after a fight or after just a heavy couple weeks, months of training? So you don't burn out. Yeah. Um, I do several things. I do yoga. Um, I do, uh, 
I do a, a lot of, I do stretch, a fascial stretch therapy. I do um, a lot of spa time, a lot of bath time, Epsom salt baths, ice baths, uh, visualization, um, meditations, like uh, recovery meditations. You can find them on YouTube. Just, you can literally type in recovery meditation. Then I go to the sauna, sauna steam room or uh, very frequent stuff I do. Uh, lots of water, tons of water. Mm. Water is number one. Yeah. I think uh, it was crazy statistic somewhere in the sixties or seventies percent wise people are walking around dehydrated. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. Especially with people are walking and just foods that we eat. And- people have headaches and, um, uh, you know, their back hurts, their joints are achy. Drink some water. Literally. It could be that simple. Don't go take Vicodin and all these pills. You have to, if your nutrition, get your nutrition and, and your hydration up, it's going to have less pain. Yeah. What's something that people don't know about fighting that is hardly talked about in the media, in interviews, uh, just in places where people talk about fighting in general? What is typically not mentioned that you think is important to say? Not mentioned. That if you, I don't know if this is known. Um, I don't know. If you don't have followers, you don't get fights. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if that's mentioned, but that's something that's like really weird to me. Like you could be a great fighter if you don't have followers, you're screwed. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Got it. It's weird. It's weird. That is weird. Yeah. Um, do you... Going back to the the visualization, Augie, my, you know, you know Augie, my trainer, yeah. Uh, he, he often says imagination is a boxer or a fighter's greatest superpower and, yeah, and visualization is a, is a form of imagination, especially when you're talking about the bag being a body or the, the pads being someone's face. Um, what, how can someone who maybe isn't fighting, but goes to work every day or, or is just wanting to be better at their craft, whatever that is. Mm-hmm. How do, what is a small step that they can use to, to begin really not, not just utilizing, but really embodying this idea of imagination, visualization to be better at something? How do you view it? What would you suggest um, if you had to break it down? I had to break that down. For me, I'm very extreme. So... <laughs> Um, I'm getting that. <laughs> yeah, I'm you very, have to be. Oh my god, I'm so extreme. So for me, I just I literally drown myself in it every day in yeah. whatever I I like to do, or not like to do, but whatever I want to be great in, or I want to be great in everything I do. I don't want to just be okay or basic or mediocre or oh number one contender. I want to be the champ. <laughs> mm-hmm. So I bury myself in in what, everything positive and successful it has. So when I want, I want, like I said, I watch Sugar Ray Leonard, all the greats. Um, I see what they do. And, and I know running, the things that you hate to do, do them the most. Because usually when you're doing the things that you hate the most are probably the best for you for the most part. Mm-hmm. You just got to suck it up, you know, suck it up and, and do it. Um, just pushing through and, and uh, yeah. uh, surrounding yourself with, with the success, successful people that are in that business or that activity and don't cave, don't lower yourself or keep yourself down um, and not shine because someone else is getting mad about it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that happens a lot too. I mean, don't outshine, don't outshine the master, <laughs> but, you know, always put on, you know, um, put on your best, no matter what. Yeah. How do you handle the media uh, when you win or lose or just, you know, there's, there's a lot, there's a lot of noise. And for someone who isn't disciplined or for someone who 
hasn't yet understood the power that media can have on an individual's mm. mind. How do you view it? How do you watch it, not watch it? What, what are your thoughts on that? Well, I mean, some of it's very positive. Some, some of it's very negative. Mm-hmm. Um, you just have to really know yourself, know who you are and know that it's part of the game. You have to take the good with the bad. It's not all great and sunshine. And there's a lot of, especially media, it, it's negative. Uh, negativity cells, uh, drama cells. So you have to understand that, especially if you're in the entertainment business, you're susceptible to some bullshit, you know? Uh-huh. So I accepted that. I literally told myself, sat there, I was like, you're going to be able to deal with that? <laughs> I'm like, yeah. <laughs> so I, that's what I did. I was, yeah. Like literally, that's what I said. So um, when you accept something, it makes it easier to deal with. I guess yeah. instead of fighting it, you're like, okay, I'll be able to have my, be able to say my side eventually. You just can't let it get to you because it doesn't matter. Like these, you know, they're doing it for likes and money. It's all money. It doesn't mm-hmm. matter. You know, if you and your team and your family and your significant other know who you are, that's all that matters. Mm. Yeah, I like that. Has there ever been a moment where an opponent, it, whether it was like on, on the way up to the fight, like months leading up to the fight, or it was like at weigh-ins or, or whatever, that you, you almost got off center, but you caught yourself and you were proud of that. And like, you were really aware of that. Do you have like an example of how you've worked through that in real time when you didn't know if you were going to be able to? Yeah. I mean, um, I had my second, or I lost, I lost my belt once and I had a rematch Mm. and, um, I had gotten COVID and I had double pneumonia and I was just like, bro, like, oh my God, like I'm screwed and all this and, and like, I can't fight and, but I'm, I don't want to pull out. And, um, so I just focused up and said, okay, calm down, get better one day at a time. So I would walk for as long as I could in the morning and then walk as long as I could at night. And I would build and build that way and just kind of one hour at a time, one day at a time. Don't think of yesterday's ammonia. Think about your overcoming today. And as long as you push hard, when you can, because they're like, okay, when you go home, you have to rest and do your antibiotics. And I was like, all right, the day I'm off antibiotics, that's when I'm going hard. And then, so I just, it was seven days after I got out of the hospital and then just build myself. And um, yeah, I ended up being successful in in my, my return fight from COVID and you just can't freak out. You got to just stay calm and just stay in the moment i know it's hard to do when you're in the moment but the more you do it the like like i said earlier it becomes um a habit it becomes a lifestyle just becomes the way your brain thinks we can literally be anything and do uh think any way we want to over time Mm -hmm. you can literally brainwash somebody that's why brainwashing and all that stuff is real because it's just a repetitive whatever you repeat to yourself it's true we create our own reality, literally. Like, it's literal. You, if I think I am Superman, I'm Superman. Like, and I will believe that. If I say that to myself every day for two, three, four, five, six months, I'm probably going to believe that. Mm-hmm. Your brain doesn't know. Not, uh, like, uh, over time, like, you tell yourself over and over, it doesn't, it's, that's the only thing it knows. Mm-hmm. So yeah. you can use that to your advantage or to your disadvantage because if you keep negative self-talk and I'm bad, I'm ugly, I'm this, I'm that, it, that's literally what you are. Yeah, that's true. But it, so true. You know, it's easy. It's, it's really that simple. Do you ever worry about uh, getting hit and what that's going to cause health-wise long-term? Um, 
do I worry about the long term? Or, or just like, you know, when you get hit in the head, like obviously, you know, repetitively, do you ever think about like, damn, like, I wonder what this is doing or does that, no, and that doesn't cross your mind. Well, I mean, I do yearly scans on my brain. That's good. So I kind of um, have a, a peace of mind about it, but I have thought about it. Yeah. You know, I COVID messed up my brain more than um, <laughs> than this fighting thing has. I yeah. Swear, like it gave, right. me, it gave me like chronic fatigue and like it messed up my memory. It screwed me up. So I'm like, fighting's healthier than COVID. That's for damn sure. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. But I mean, I guess I think about, but I'm not really though. I don't get in depth because if I did, right, yeah, I probably wouldn't do it. Yeah, you and know? yeah, and I was just curious because I know uh, I think about that when I'm uh, sparring and stuff, you know. And I, I am, I have to be sharp and things for I talk for a living too, so that that's another reason. Yeah. But, um, right. Yeah, I was just, I was just curious, if, like if that's like a thing that fighters think about or it isn't. Um, but. Yeah, I'm glad that you get your scans because that's important to keep a pulse on. Yeah, sure. absolutely. Yeah, damn. Yeah. The, the Cleveland Clinic over, you know, here in Vegas, that's they, they do a fighters program to where um, they actually pay me to do it. So that's cool. it's pretty cool. Yeah. What are you most excited about in the coming years, uh, knowing that your career has been the way that it is and, and the momentum that you've gathered uh, just from your hard work and, and all the dedication that you've put into this? where where is that heading what are you most excited about i'm actually uh, like it's weird because i am transitioning a little bit in my mind about things i'm getting older and you know um i really look forward to motivating and helping build other fighters mm. you know like that i'm gonna really like that I, I thought i would be crushed you know like when my career is over but i do am finding like it's growing more and more inside of me like I reach out to more fighters and help help the younger ones you know with their mentality I see them doing stupid shit online and I'm like dude I mean I'm sure I'll do the same thing but um I'm like no dude take that down what are you doing like (laughs) sponsors aren't gonna want to touch you dude like they're like what it's just great content I'm like no it's not Mm. it might be good content for your friends but are you here for your friends or are you here to make a living you know like you have to like businesses don't want to represent like that kind of stuff so i just find myself i'm old now so i'm i just find myself uh concerned with the younger generation now and wanting to teach them and show them you know some easier uh some shortcut yeah i guess you could say is there yeah. anyone on top of mind that you would love to coach No, there's not anybody, nobody specific okay. right now. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. No, I think that that's a natural kind of transition for you being that, yeah. you know, you've, a, you've achieved a certain level of success there. Massive, like the top that you can go. Now it's like, right. who else can I share this with? And that's where I think yeah. life really becomes very, very meaningful is right. when that legacy of your impact lives on mm-hmm. beyond you. And, and that's why when I first got out of what I was into when I was younger, um, I want to, I was like, oh, I want to do this and I want to help this, these kids and these kids. So with, I'm a little late. Uh, I had some long marriage that was not healthy for me. So I, I have, uh, it's taken a little bit longer for me to get where I wanted to be in terms of like uh, what I wanted to do with my platform, mm. you know, like reach, like I like, I want to get to the little gangster kids, the little, the little crazies, you know, the ones that that nobody gives a shit about. They, they send them to juvenile hall, they send them, get them locked up and they just forget about them when these kids just, I talk to a kid in prison right now. I talk to him every day and he's like, thank you, thank you. you know, I help him. He asks me questions about workouts in there and, and they just need someone to give a shit. Mm-hmm. Someone that is important or, you know, an authoritative figure to have respect for them. Talk to them with some respect and, compassion and love because I was that youngster that people threw away and um, didn't understand me. And all I needed was an understanding not to be talked at, but talk to, let's have Mm -hmm. a conversation, Mm -hmm. understand me, 
you know, take the time to understand me. You're here to be a helper. No, you're here to bully me, bro. You know, like, and I seen that, like that happens so much, you know, like I just, uh, I want to use, I'm going to be able to connect to a lot of people and help them change their way of thinking and um, behavior. I agree. But they, they do it. I'm just a guide and, and literally someone for them to understand them. That's all. Yeah. I see that. I see that for you for sure. Yeah. Um, what do you, what is something that most people don't know about you that you think would be relevant to say to them right now? I'm nicer than I look. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah, I, mean, I can well, see that. Definitely with it. No, <laughs> no but, um, um, you know, I, I think my image is a little unapproachable and my yeah. demeanor and my persona. Yeah. But I'm literally just, I don't know it's where I came from, what I grew up in. And just, mm. I just, have, I don't know. But I've heard a lot of people say, damn, we thought you were crazy. Like the yeah. way you fight, the way you, my persona is. And I'm actually, I, I still have like a crazy side to me, but I, just, sure. I don't walk around like that. Right. It's not like I walk around in society like, oh, I'm going to bare knuckle you. Or, <laughs> right. right. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, I think that's relevant and pretty, I I try to like smile extra, extra so, mm. you know, I don't seem so. Yeah. Like, yeah. Scary. Well, because there is a, a version of yourself that needs to emerge in those very primal situations like fighting, right? Uh, yeah. When I train athletes, I help them identify and create an alter ego, yeah. you know, an, an identity of themselves that, that is always there, but they didn't even know was there, put a name to it, craft it so that that version of them can come out when everyone else is afraid, when the, t- the game's on the line, when there's seconds mm-hmm. left, when it's the last round, that version can be activated and they can deliver their best performance when right. most people can't. Um, and it sounds like you do that. Maybe you didn't know that you were doing that, or, yeah. or maybe you are very aware that you're doing that. Um, is that true for you? And what does that process look like? Well, you have to come, you have to, I can't walk around like this bit all day. Right. You know, I right. can't, I mean, that's, I'm going to end up in prison. Exactly. You know, and uh, <laughs> it's just ridiculous. Um, so I learned because where I grew up and like what we were doing as teenagers, you know, we were fighting a lot and doing what we were doing. That was a different person. And then it kind of went into my about 21, 22 is when I started to get out of that. Um, I had to learn to put that part of me away. Right. And civilize myself I guess you could say and just like I told you with Gil Martinez that told me at the door you you're just here to focus so when you learn that focus you learn how to and then when like when you're in the ring and you're punching uh, or you're with someone who's smaller right you know you don't go in there and just if you're sparring me you're not gonna hit me with all your manpower right you have to learn to put that savage away that you would use for another dude you know um so i think with all those trainings and in, in, in boxing and combat sports and martial arts you learn how to turn that on and off mm-hmm, mm-hmm. you know at certain times because you and, and when you're teaching kids you can't go and all up and hit them super hard right right like you have to learn control and that's it plays off into your life and um learning how to be a savage and learning when to be loving and kind to your family and friends and even the asshole that's cutting you off. You can't just go beat them up. Yeah. You know, you just gotta, whatever. Yeah. I've got whatever I'm alive. I didn't crash. It's cool. Right. Well, <laughs> you know? another thing that you're making me think about is the one thing that I love about things like this, like fighting is that it, it brings out a version of you that you can't, it's hard to bring out in any other setting. And that's what you mentioned when you walked by that gym, when you were younger and you noticed that fighting was able to hold you in a way that nothing else could, because it's so right now in this moment, it brings Mm -hmm. you to the present. 
Right. Um, and I don't think that people have situations where they're being put on the line like that, you know? And so I think it, it, there is, I would challenge everyone listening to find something that can bring them to that level of presence. If that's giving a speech in front of, pu- in front of a public place, yeah. that is terrifying. Yourself. Do that. Yeah. If that yeah. is, uh, going in and signing up for a boxing gym and sparring somebody because you're deathly afraid of it. Do that. If that mm-hmm. is, uh, you know, go traveling to a place that you've never been by yourself, do that. Like there's mm-hmm. so much value in those moments, so much wisdom that, that allows you to see a version of yourself that makes you better. Right. And the more versions of you that you see, the more, versions you can bring out in whatever situation that you're in that can mm-hmm. handle that situation to the best of your ability. But right. if you only think you have three versions of yourself, angry, yeah. sad, and happy, like yeah. you're doing yourself a disservice. You have, mm-hmm. you have uh, grit, you have discipline, you have commitment, you have freedom, you have all these other aspects that mm-hmm. moments like challenge help bring out. And you that? get, oh yeah, sorry. No, um, and you also get to see the things that you left. Yeah. So you get to improve, you know what I mean? And so like, if you go in and you're sparring and you notice that you're negative self-talking, literally boxing or pressure situations reveal things rawly uh, about yourself to you. Like the, in the fight, if you're a coward, and you're in a fight, it's going to show. If you are an asshole, it's going to show. Like, it's literally, you can't hide in there. You're, like, yeah. pretty much naked up there. And um, then that's when you get to, that's why I go back on tape, and I go watch. And I'm like, okay, okay, I see that, I see that. Okay, I'm acting timid there. I'm da, 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 here. How do I get myself stronger there? Mm-hmm. You know, so it's true. It's um you get to see all the, the positives and all the negatives. And if yeah. the negatives aren't bad, you just got to, that's great because they're now exposed for you to work on them. To make pressure, them stronger. Reveals, pressure reveals cracks. Right. Yeah. So I enjoy that part. I've learned to enjoy that, mm. you know, and, and sometimes, you know, I, I still got to keep my ego in check when I'm with a new coach and I'm like, who I, what's he telling me that for? Is, I don't do that. I usually I do a one, two, uh, right uppercut, but then I'm like, dude, shut up. Like you're learning something new. You're learning a new combination. Like let this guy teach you, mm. you know, I still have to, you know, be coachable. And like, and I am very coachable, but sometimes you get yeah. your head to be like, I know this, I'm like, no, shut up and listen and learn and mm. be open to other people's um, views and tools and ways of life. Yeah. I mean, you never know when that you're going to need it. It's true. You know, you never know. And I've literally been in a sparring match where I did this move that a coach, you know, for a long time ago, I was like, Holy shit. That guy, I remember that guy taught me that like five years ago. I never thought I would use that's literally happened. To me. It's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> That's amazing. Okay. So as, as we wind down here, what, what are, what is something that we haven't yet talked about that you feel would be necessary to say, um, in our, for our final questions here as we end up. Hmm. Any questions? Said? Or yeah. Or anything that we haven't Sorry. talked about that you feel needs to be said g- given, you know, mm-hmm. what we've covered so far. Right. No, I just, I, I really find importance on uh, that. The first and foremost is nutrition and water. Like a lot of people are depressed and, and have a hard time and they struggle with either weight or mental, emotional. It's all comes down to how, what you're feeding yourself, what you're intaking, your water, um, you know, alcohol, you know, I, I try not to drink that much. I, I, I noticed that like I'm, I'm at uh, elite level. If I drink, I feel like mm-hmm. uh, I'm like, how do you people do this every day or three times a week? 
Like I do it once. I, I probably drink about 10 times a year. Mm. You know what I mean? Like eight times a year, maybe probably, probably less. I'm just saying 10, so I don't be a liar. You know what I mean? Like I, but it's not very often. And I just don't, I, I notice the drop and um, I just feel like it, the uh, drugs and alcohol just really bring yeah. down. Like I, I believe like, like uh, microdosing in like THC and stuff like that helps a little bit, but when like doing it all day, yeah. it's insane. Yeah. So I just think nutrition, I, I'm a big, I'm big on that nutrition and water intake mm-hmm. needs to be number one. If you're having problem with depression, sadness, anger, or, you know, fatigue, you know, it's right. not, you don't need to go to the doctor and get unless you have like a really a, a sickness that, um, but still correct yourself. And I bet you're not going to have to take as much medication. You know, yeah. that's, that's just one thing that I'm really big on. I love that. I, that I changed my life. Yeah. yeah, no, it seems like it. Thank you for sharing that. That um, the, the more people I interview at an elite level, they learn to fix the leaky faucets, mm-hmm. you know, and they, they have a certain level of feeling that they need to have inside like they need to be able to sense that to have their your peak performance come out regularly and yeah. it's high 80s usually in the 90s and anything that takes them below that it's like why am i even doing this this is setting me back this is putting me behind and i'm that's all about capitalizing <laughs> momentum that's literally someone asked me to go out with them i'm like that's taking my energy away from you know and, and yeah. it's bad and i'm trying to like be a little bit more social but it's still taking away from my performance literally me going on four out four hours going out watching you eat and then i have to eat i I don't like eating out because that shit is shit every single even if they say they're healthy it's still shit yeah you know like literally down to that it's it's bad that's why i don't have a wife (laughs) because and i don't blame her i mean i don't blame her i was i'm I'm way too focused i had to get somebody in the business that under like doesn't Mm. um i'm extreme yeah you know but i I believe extreme helps me a lot (laughs) so um it's you don't have to go to so, so extremes you know but why you have to cut things out to be successful you have to it's true there's no other way around it there's no like okay well I'll, for a month i'll go hard and then a month i'll be with my friends no you just literally took away the month that you just did <laughs> and now you're like it, it sucks but it's true it, there's so much sacrifice in um being the best yeah you know? yeah Awesome. Well, Christine, thank you for your time. Thank you, thank you for your wisdom. Uh, where can everyone find you? Where's the best way to get in contact with you if, if people are want to reach out? Yeah, I, I won't look like this. I hope, uh, you know, maybe we can put something on a video. Uh, <laughs> yeah. No, but um, it's, it's at, at Christine Faria is my Instagram and uh, my Facebook is at Christine Faria or Christine okay. Faria. Yeah. Cool. Simple. So that's the best yeah. place. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. Well, good luck on your next <laughs> upcoming fight. I'm sure I'll see you, you in the gym. And yes, uh, thank you for, again for coming on the show. Thank you for having me.